All right. How's everybody doing? Okay, so. Me too. I'm going to tell you a love story. I first fell in love when I was a hopeless romantic in college. I didn't understand her at first, and she didn't bother to understand me. You, you know that feeling you get when you're super excited to meet someone special that you've just met or you got a crush on, and you're super excited? Uh, you, you know that like he or she isn't super into you, but you still manage to text them like a thousand times a day with, where are you from? What's your favorite color? How was your double shot of espresso this morning? And after hours and hours of deafening silence, you get that long-awaited text on your phone. It just says fine. <laughs> that's, that's OK. That's OK. I'm fine. You know, despite her giving me the cold shoulder, I was still really into her. I, I was just drawn to how she just moved so gracefully and expressed herself in nonverbal ways. It's the way, it's the way that um, uh, expressed herself in nonverbal ways. Um, the more I stared at her in awe, the more the mysteries and stories in my head continued to grow about her. After all, it's the unknown. It's the thrill of uncovering the mystery that seduces the follower. So semester after semester, as I was studying for my exams, I was also studying her. I was trying to understand how something so fragile, so delicate could move with such precision, beauty, and control. She was shy at first, definitely flirted a bit, not revealing any of her secrets. But from time to time, I got creative ways to learn something unique and fascinating about her. For example, when I learned that she controls global gene expression in various cells and tissue types, it turned me on, intellectually. Of course, I'm talking about none other than the biological molecule RNA, or ribonucleic acid. RNA is DNA's partner molecule. Whereas DNA is hardy and tough, able to withstand thousands of years of frigid temperatures and still be intact in woolly mammoth remains, RNA is like a gentle and fragile creature. DNA, with its strong chemical backbone, is like a strong intertwining spiral staircase with two strands instead of one. RNA, on the other hand, is like a flower flowing in the wind with its flexible single strands. After RNA is made in the cell's command center, the nucleus, it gets peppered and sprinkled with unique chemical modifications before it's thrust into the bellows of the cytoplasm or the cell's manufacturing plant where proteins are made. Some RNAs that are made in the cell's command center stay in central command. They grow like climbing ivy onto what are known as um, uh, proteins, uh, which can control whether a gene is to be turned on or off. RNAs in their diverse forms are beautiful and elegant, unique in their composition, and last only for a few moments. Now, DNA and RNA have a love story of their own. DNA. Uh, and RNA, they complement one another through complementary base pair sequences. How many of you have heard about the genetic code? OK, OK. So there's A for adenine, T for thymine, G for guanine, and C for cytosine. Now that's DNA. RNA is basically the same, except that it contains U for uracil instead of T. This, this dichotomy of them being so similar, yet different enough to impart unique characteristics to each molecule posed a conundrum in myself when I was just a fledgling freshman at Berkeley. I felt like I would crumble under the pressure of classes, trying to make new friends, trying to find extracurricular activities, and most importantly, just trying to find a coherent purpose in my life. So I decided to do the one thing that I knew I liked reading about. And I joined a research lab that studied the mysterious and elusive RNA. 
I joined a research lab that was studying the fundamental biology behind a bacterial immune system known as CRISPR. How many of you have heard of CRISPR? All right. That Five years, or actually like around 10 years ago, there would be no hands that would go up. So CRISPR is a technology that was adapted from the natural defenses of bacteria. Just like humans who get sick with viral infections, bacteria too get viral infections and they have to defend themselves against these predators. How do they do that? One way they do that is by using what's known as CRISPR RNAs and CAS proteins or CAS proteins to fend off viral invaders. They do so primarily by chopping up and destroying DNA. When these components, the CRISPR RNAs and the Cas proteins, are then transferred into more complex organisms, it allows for the manipulation of genes in those organisms, or more colloquially put, gene editing. In 2012, Dr. Jennifer Downa's lab at UC Berkeley discovered the biological function of Cas9, a protein that is the leading tool for gene editing technologies. Cas9 binds to these RNA molecules known as CRISPR RNAs. And Cas9, like a surgeon, Cas9 being here in this, in this, in this diagram here, and RNA being red and DNA being blue, Cas9, like a skilled surgeon, holds the CRISPR RNA scans the DNA for a matching sequence, and upon finding a match, shh, Cas9 makes a cut in the DNA itself. We now have the ability to cut, copy, edit, paste, manipulate our own heredity. Many forms of cancer, neurodegenerative diseases like like Huntington's disease, and even HIV can be targeted using CRISPR-Cas9. Cas9 uses RNA to target DNA in any cell, in any species, and yes, this technology is so revolutionary that even we, our species, the great Homo sapiens, are slowly inching towards a future where we get to decide which genes should remain in a population and which ones shouldn't. So I've now started graduate school at Caltech, hooray, uh, where I am continuing my journey of studying RNAs, where my journey first started with the CRISPR RNAs. I've now grown to be studying a highly diverse group of RNA molecules known as long non-coding RNAs. Whereas CRISPR RNAs were only just a few nucleotides or a few letters long, Long non-coding RNAs are, sub, are sometimes hundreds or even thousands of times longer than CRISPR RNAs, which allow them to fold and curl like origami into unique shapes and structures, which in turn dictate their function, many of which are still unknown and that we're currently researching in the Gutman Lab for Link RNA Biology at Caltech. When I reflect on what my relationship has looked like with RNA over the past several years, I'm filled with excitement and wonder. In our early stages, in our naive, nascent state, I was, I was just studying. I was trying to paint a picture in my head of all the diverse roles that RNA plays in the cell. As our relationship has matured, I've realized that my enthusiasm and my passion for RNA biology has helped me uncover RNA secrets in many ways, only for me to discover that she's hiding 10 more. And although RNA cannot directly communicate with us, her ability to serve as an intermediary between DNA and protein synthesis, her ability to, to guide the technological revolution and drive evolution using CRISPR-Cas9 is a sound so deafening, we all have heard her. And you know, although she may not appreciate her own beauty, I continue to be enchanted. Thank you.